Welcome. Thank you for tuning in to the Reading Choral Society Scholarship Award Gala. My name is Graham Beer, and I'm the music director of RCS. It's my pleasure to host this hour of musical treats from our scholarship winners. In a normal season, we would hold a fundraising gala partway through the year, and would also announce the scholarship winners after one of our spring concerts. This past year, that was not possible, and so we wanted to do a virtual event just as they're heading off to school this fall to let you know who has won, give you a chance to meet them, hear a little bit from them, both what they're up to and some of their singing. So a big thanks to all of the scholarship winners for taking part and providing musical recordings for this event, and I will move into the interviews in a moment. If you would like any information, I'll put translations of the lyrics of the songs they're singing in the description below, and you can also find a list of who is singing where in case you want to skip around and listen to things in a different order. We have nine musicians for you in this event. Six of them have been awarded scholarships toward tuition for those who want to continue to study voice and or sing in choirs while they go away to university or college. Um, in the coming year, we're also going to hear something from someone who won one of our scholarships last year but has graduated, and we'll have two of our section leaders offering musical interludes. I hope you enjoy, and thank you again for tuning in. If you would like to contribute to the Reading Choral Society Voice Scholarship Fund, please see the link in the description below, and just put a memo on it saying that it is for the scholarships. Thank you so much for your support. Thanks for joining us, Sophia Stankowitz. Where did you go to school in Berks County? I went to Exeter. Nice. We've worked, uh, the Reading Choral Society worked a couple of years ago with the Exeter Choir, although I think it was a number of years back, probably before you were there. Probably. <laughs> I hope we will again soon. We try to rotate around. It's a lot of fun. Uh, and I remember it was a lovely choir at the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It still is. Nice. Were there any works um, from this, this past year that you performed that stuck out in your memory? Um, we actually didn't have a concert at all, mm -hmm. so we didn't really get any opportunities to sing with the school, um, but I was a member of the uh, All Eastern Choir with, uh, involved with PMEA, so I got to sing a virtual concert with them. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. I only ever made it as far as regionals, never made it <laughs> myself. <laughs> I grew up in Western Pennsylvania, so same system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Congrats. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and where are you going to study in the fall? I will be attending Shenandoah University to major in vocal performance. Awesome. Um, and are you going to, do you have anything particular you're looking forward to there? Any courses you're already signed up for? Or? Um, so I will be participating in one of the musicals in the fall, Bright Star. And uh, I'm also uh, applied for a work study in the costume shop to kind of get both an onstage setting of things and a backstage setting of things. That's a really great way to do it. Mm -hmm. When I was an undergrad, my work study was washing pots, which <laughs> it taught me some things about work ethic. But but yeah. to be able to combine it with your with your interest in study, that's really clever. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. Well, um, would you tell us uh, what you're singing and, and maybe just give us a little bit of context? Yeah, so I will be singing Will There Really Be a Morning by Ricky Ian Gordon. And I chose that song because uh, right now and within the past year, everybody has just been looking for a better day. And mm -hmm. that is what the song is about. Just looking for like, will there really be a morning? Like, well, is there such a thing as day? Where can I find it? Um, and just providing a sense of hope that we haven't really had over the past almost year and a half. So it, it really hits a little bit like towards home for everyone. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Looking forward to hearing it and best of luck with your studies and the musical. Thank you.
And now I would like to introduce Molly Nemero. Welcome, Molly, and thanks for doing this little online gala. Thank you for having me. So where did you go to high school? I just graduated from Exeter Senior High School. Great. So you were involved in some other music. Uh, we were just chatting in, in Berks County, Berks Youth Chorus. Yes, I was a part of Berks Youth Chorus for 10 years. And I was the Master Singers representative to the board, as well as a member of multiple task forces and committees during the pandemic. And I was the chair of the Singers Committee. Keeping yourself busy. Oh, yes. Well, I hope those experiences serve you well going forward. I know I ended up doing a few of those administrative related things and, and they ended up really boosting me as I was trying to figure out my career. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And where are you studying now? I am going to be entering Wagner College in the fall, and I plan on double majoring in vocal performance and math. Vocal performance and math. What a combination. <laughs> I hear that a lot. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you do. I actually did uh, music education and environmental studies, so Ooh. no stranger to interesting combos. Everyone needs <laughs> to ask me, um, are you going to sing to the birds? Yeah. Yeah. Do, what, what, do you get a classic joke when you say that? Oh, yes. Um, am I going to be a singing math teacher? Am I going to be a singing accountant? Okay. All those things. I was, I was going to go for the, the low level one of, I, I bet you're good at counting the measure <laughs> of the music. <laughs> well, I do like Lose music count. theory, so. Yeah, yeah. That's good. That's good. I mean, there are a lot of numbers in that. I, I enjoy teaching music theory and getting into that aspect. So I hope you find some good overlap or, you know, sometimes it's good to keep them separate and get a little bit of a break from one by doing the other. Yeah. Have you got any courses that you're particularly excited about or is this just starting out with the foundation work in freshman year? Um, I'm definitely really excited about the teachers that I'm going to be working with um, and the other students. It's a really great group. And I was able to meet them before I settled on the school because for me, the teachers are just as if not more important than the program itself mm. and uh they're just really supportive and kind and it, because it's in new york city there are a lot of opportunities for um education and performance alike and i'm really excited sounds like you've made a really clear choice there yeah that's awesome well best of luck in your studies but let's get on to the song so what are you going to sing for us today Yes, I will be singing On Chloe, which is a piece by Mozart. Um, it roughly translates to a poem about love. On uh, Chloe means to Chloe. And it is a love poem to a woman with lovely blue eyes. And it speaks of kissing her and holding her. And it's just, it's just a lovely, lovely song. Okay, well, off we go. Let's hear it. Thank you so much for taking part and good luck in your future endeavors. Thank you. Oh 
Thanks for joining us. This is Paulina Ceballos, and uh, she is another of our scholarship winners. Thank you for being a part of this gala. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so where did you study in Berks County? Where did you go to school? I went to Reading Senior High School. Awesome. I've, uh, I've heard the acapella groups and, and the high school choir a few times. Um, any interesting memories from there? Any pieces you enjoyed uh, singing or musicals or anything? Uh, there was a lot. Um, we, yeah, we had a lot of stuff going on and I was involved in as much as I could. And it was just a great time. And the director, Mr. Smith, he was great. Um, and yeah, I just made a lot of good friends and a lot of great memories. So. Glad to hear it. Well, it seems to have got you started out on the right foot in terms of an interest in studying music. Um, I, I hear you're off to Temple University in the fall. Yeah, I'm going to Temple University in the fall um, to study uh, music therapy. Music therapy, nice. And what made mm -hmm. you choose music therapy? Um, well, a lot of things. <laughs> um, in middle school, we did, in my general music course, we did uh, a unit on different jobs in music, not just like music teacher or performer. She wanted to really teach us about the different opportunities you can have as a music major or any type of that major. So um, music therapy was something that we talked about and it was something that really interested me. And then once I got to high school, um, I met the music therapist um, at the Reading Hospital and she was super nice and gave me a lot of insight. Um, and then just like seeing how much music has affected me and my family and it being something that we use a lot as our own form of therapy, I could see how it can really work for others. So um, yeah, I'm just really excited for that. And it just spoke to me. So that's what I'm doing. <laughs> Sounds like a really great career path. While you're there, will you have time as far as you know, will you have time to join any choirs or do any singing or, or voice study of your own? Yes, yeah, so um, I'm actually planning on doing the opera my spring semester. I obviously have to audition, but um, they don't allow us to do it our fall semester just because they want to see how you do with handling your academics. But um, yeah, I'm really excited for that. And I think I'm required to do two ensembles um, per semester. So um, I will be joining the choir. I have my audition at the end of August. I'm very excited for that. Yeah, awesome. I, I think it's good when these programs involve a variety of things, including some performance, some study. Yes, mm -hmm. that's great. You don't happen to know what the opera is in the spring yet. No, I, oh. I'm not sure yet. <laughs> <laughs> Probably a secret I shouldn't have asked. <laughs> uh, yeah, I saw like that they already had auditions for their fall ones, but I'm not sure what it um, is yet, so. Okay. Yeah, I've got to yeah. keep an eye out on that. <laughs> well, I wish you the best of luck with your studies, and we're so glad to be able to support you in that. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very what excited. What will you be singing for the gala today? Uh, I'll be singing Night is Falling by Franz Joseph Haydn. And this is a recording you made as, as one of your scholarship uh, audition recordings, right? Yeah, it was. Uh, I used it for a few college auditions and scholarship auditions also. Well, I appreciate you sharing it with us. Night is falling over the shore, and no storm of love shall blow. Shines in heaven far above, but what matters was in heaven when the years should be. 
And now I would like to introduce Tierra Best, another one of our scholarship winners for the coming year. Tierra, uh, where did you go to school? I attended Muhlenberg High School, and um, I will continue my education at Washington Adventist University in Maryland, and I'll be majoring in music therapy. Music therapy, awesome. I remember that was a relatively new line of study uh, a number of years ago when I was looking at programs as an undergrad. This is very new. I'm excited because this industry is booming now, so there's tons of opportunity. It sure is. I've got a couple of friends who have gone into it and, and have a wonderful, fulfilling time with what they're doing. I, I wish you the best of luck with that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, is there anything offered by your school that you're particularly excited about? Yes. they In high school, I did not have the opportunity to participate in an in-school orchestra. And uh, my school, now that I'm going to be attending, has an orchestra that I can partake in, which I'm very excited for. I'm also excited for the choral ensembles because, you know, I love to sing. <laughs> and yes, Of course. What do you what do you play in the orchestra? I play clarinet, so I'm not a string, but I play clarinet. Yeah, I'm a trumpet player as well myself, and I've I found that it helps influence the way I sing, the way I approach all music. So mm -hmm, that's definitely, great to hear. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. So um, must have been interesting having your senior year during a pandemic. Yeah, it Can you was. Tell very... us a, a little bit about what that was like. Yeah, so honestly, when we first got out of school, I'm like, oh, we're going to be back in two weeks. I shouldn't be affected too much. But then, you know, it, it was like, okay, we're going to go another week and another week. And it just kept going. I'm like, well, what am I going to do? We haven't been in band and chorus for so long. Like our concerts, what's going to happen? So I kind of just tried to refine my skills. But you can only do that for so long because when you really have no material to hmm. work on, it's like, what do you do? And so it, it was an adjustment, I would say, but, you know, there was, they, my teachers did the best that they could, and we did, like, online practices, we submitted recordings, so we made it work. It was that, I think the adjustment was the biggest thing that, you know, affected me, but otherwise, you know, my teachers made it the best that they could, and I really appreciate them for that. Yeah, well, good to hear, and, and, and you would have been singing with Mr. Snelling, I assume, as in the chorus? Yes. Mm -hmm. Wonderful guy. It's a lot to a lot to deal with switching over to virtual. I know the Red and Coral Society had a similar experience trying to figure out, you know, are we going to be back or not? Are our concerts canceled in May? Or so we tried to hold out hope, and then uh, luckily I had the summer to plan for the coming year and, and get my feet under me. So definitely, yeah. Yeah. yeah well, virtual. glad. Go ahead. I was going to say virtual um, platforms have saved us in this time because they sure have. I can't imagine what it was like a hundred years ago with the flu pandemic. I can't even imagine. <laughs> yeah. Well, hope, uh, it looks like we're starting to be through it and, and hopefully your ensembles in the fall will have more in-person opportunities than we've had the past year. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Well, let's, let's get on to the music. So you've, you've kindly uh, made a recording, especially just for this and yeah. um, very grateful. What, are you singing for us? Yeah, I'm going to be singing She Used to Be Mine, written by Sarah Bareilles for the Broadway show Waitress, which is a beautiful piece. And um, I chose it because although it's written about abused pregnant women, which is very, I know it's a dark topic, all women can relate to it at different stages of life because um, Jenna, the um, lead character, goes and talks about how she, her old life, she, it's kind of been ripped away from her and she has to take on this new identity. And I know we all had that identity crisis we had to deal with, like in junior high and high school. And Jenna goes, you know, she describes her struggles with losing herself. And I know a lot of people have lost their self before and, and just, I can connect to her so much and just feeling her emotion and just putting on the stage is truly an inspiring experience. And, um, and I, I do believe we all experienced Jenna's story. She doesn't really go into the details about her abuse, but you feel her emotion, especially when she performs it. It's very, it's very touching. Yeah, I, I know the song and I love it, though I haven't yet caught the full musical, but uh, looking forward to your rendition. Yes. <laughs> Thanks so much for being a part of this and uh, best of luck with your studies. Thank you. <laughs> it's not simple to say those days. I don't recognize me. These shoes and this apron got place and its patrons have taken more than I gave them. It's not easy to know I'm not anything like I used to be, although it's true, I 
was never attention sweet center. I still remember that girl. She's imperfect, but she tries. She is good, but she lies. She is hard on herself. She is broken and won't ask for help. She is messy, but she's kind. She is lonely most of the time. She's all this mixed up and baked in a beautiful pie. She's gone, but she used to be mine. You're not what I asked for. Sometimes life just slips in through a back door and carves out a person and makes you believe it's all true. And now I've got you, and you're not what I asked for. If I'm honest, I know I would give it all back for a chance to start over and rewrite an ending or two. For the girl that I knew who be reckless just enough, who can hurt, but who learns how to toughen up when she's bruised and gets used by a man who can love. And then she'll get stuck and be scared of the life that's inside her, growing stronger each day, till it finally reminds her to fight just a little, to bring back the fire in her eyes that's been gone but used to be She is lonely most of the time. She's all this mixed up and baked in a beautiful pie. She's gone, but she used to be mine. Our bass section leader, Roderick Nevin, is offering two short songs back to back. It's a bit of a palate cleanser. In fact, he plays the bagpipes. He'll be playing the tunes on his bellows-blown Scottish small pipes, and they are called Snug in a Blanket and Kiangula.
And now I'm welcoming Elise Eggleston. Thank you for joining us. And uh, where did you go to school in Berks County? Um, I went to Fleetwood Area High School. Lovely. And you, I assume you were in the choirs there? Yes. Yep. I, part I was in the women's choir, the vocal ensemble, uh, the Corlears, which is a small group of eight students. Um, and I also enjoyed doing things in counties through states all throughout high school. Kept yourself busy singing. Glad to hear it. Yes. Uh -huh. And uh, where are you going to school now? I am at Millersville University with the Tulsa School of Music, and I'm doing music education K through 12 um, with Code I certification, and I'm also doing a, a dual major with vocal performance. Very nice, yeah. And you're t I, that means, I guess, you're focusing more on your private voice lessons than you would be if you were just music education. Is that true? Yes. Yeah. There's you get a, a longer lesson each week to focus on all more repertoire that you're given and you also have more recital requirements and things like that and also a few more classes like foreign diction class things like that of course it's it's the big topic in this gala because it's been such a crazy year but um were you taking voice lessons in person online in a mix and, and what was that like yeah i was taking voice lessons completely on zoom for since last march Till, all the way up until this May. Um, thankfully, in the coming fall, it'll be back in person, but um, it was definitely sort of hard to stay motivated at times. I think when you're not getting the opportunities to perform, there's less of a motivation to practice for those performance opportunities. So I just had to, I guess, find different sources of motivation. And that would be like, oh, I want to do this for myself and for my, for my own voice. I want my own voice to get better, not just to prepare for an audition or a performance. And I think my voice teacher was very encouraging. She didn't like take it easy when we were on Zoom. Like she laid on all the hard, hard arias and things like that to really keep me going and busy with practicing. Yeah. How does that work um, when you don't have the ability to have the accompanist in the same room or, yeah. Oh yeah, it was hard. Uh, most of the songs we just found like karaoke accompaniment tracks on YouTube or whatever, but for some things that you want to take more liberties, I guess, with ornaments or whatever, um, you would just sing it a cappella for your juries, or you could have, you could record yourself singing it and send it to one of the accompanists and they could try to follow you as much as they can. And then they'll send you a recording of their piano playing so that you can kind of mesh them together when you're singing but that was difficult too because sometimes you might sing something completely you might sing something one way when you send them the recording and then like by the time you're performing it you're like just doing different things so it's kind of tricky that way as well so I'm definitely looking forward to doing live um collaborations with accompanists again <laughs> I'm so glad we seem to be moving back that way yes yes definitely well, uh, what are you singing for us today? Um, I'm going to be singing uh, Mein Herr Marquis from the opera Die Fluttermus. And um, so it's in German and a little bit about it. I'm singing as the character of Adele and she is like a, a maid for a rich, wealthy, upper-class family. And the woman who she uh, works for is going to a ball and she instantly just really wants to go and she's all excited about these, this idea of going to a ball and feeling really beautiful and elegant and wealthy for a night. So she um, gets up the courage to steal one of her um, ladies like ball gowns and she ends up going. And while she's there, um, her the husband of the woman who she works for was like, oh, I recognize that dress and he's suspicious of her. And so while these people are accusing her, she's just sort of laughing it off and being like, oh no, uh, such an elegant person like myself could never be a lowly maid. So that's what it's about. And it's just, I chose it because I think it's just kind of lighthearted and fun with the laughing. And um, the recording is also the last live performance that I did since COVID. So it kind of makes me happy to look back on that and, to look forward to hoping to do that again soon. Well, thank you so much for sharing that with us. Looking mm -hmm. forward to it. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Best of luck with your studies. Thank you so much.
welcome to Kristen Sarusky, and uh, thanks for joining us. Um, hi, my name is Kristen. Um, I went to Exeter Township Senior High School, and I graduated in 2018. Wonderful, thanks. And um, you're now attending Lebanon Valley, is that right? Yes, I'm going to be a senior this year. Woo! <laughs> All right. And uh, so glad that we're able to support you in your studies. Um, I'm curious, uh, we've all just gone through a pandemic year, which has had a big impact, um, not just on our lives, but even more so if you do music. Uh, there have been a lot more restrictions, particularly for singing. So um, I'm curious what it was like at Lebanon Valley in the past year. It must have been challenging. Um, very challenging. So specifically with choir, we were not in the choir room, but in the chapel. So we were extra, extra spaced out. Um, two or three rows between each of us. Um, two people per row because they're about 12 feet apart instead of six. Um, so as you can imagine, blending was very difficult because you can't really hear your neighbor. So that was something we really zoned in on this last year, trying to do that. It was a little odd. Are you, <laughs> are you anticipating any advantages out of that? Do you, do you think it challenged the musicians to, to work on blend in a new way or are we just glad to be done with it? You can say um, I think it, I think it definitely challenged us. Um, it forced us even more so to listen to one another and blend in that way. Um, so that that's definitely an advantage. And I think once we can sing a little closer together, we'll be able to sound better. Yeah. Um, but I'm glad if we never have to do it again. <laughs> yeah. For performances, um, I, did you have any audiences present or was it all digital? Um, it was all digital. And did you record separately or, or as a group? For the fall semester, we recorded separately, and we made a big video for our Christmas at the Valley. Um, but in the spring semester, we recorded together and then just live streamed it. Oh, I guess it's kind of nice to try things a couple of different ways, actually. Yes. Yeah. Well, here's hoping that um, that this fall things can can move a little bit. <laughs> yeah, move a little bit back towards what we signed up for, huh? Yeah. Absolutely. Well, you're going to sing uh, a piece for us now. Um, this is a clip from a recital. Is that right? It's from my half recital last fall, well, which I'll be having a full recital this fall. If anybody wants to tune in on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, drop us a note. We'll pass that on on our page if, if, you, if you like. Thank you. Um, so would you let us know what song you're singing, the composer, and, um, and a little bit of what it's about? Um, so I'll be singing Au Couleur Vald by Hannes Brahms. Um, so the piece itself is in German, so I'll translate a little bit here. Um, it means, O oh, cool forest in which my beloved walks, where are you murmuring? O oh, echo, where are you listening? Who loved to understand my song? So basically, it is a woman walking through a forest searching for her lover. Um, I believe, I'm not entirely sure, but I think he might have passed away. So it might be like a little more of a sorrowful song. When you listen to it, I hope you agree. <laughs> well... Thank you so much for taking part in this gala, and uh, congratulations on the scholarship, and I hope next year goes well. Thank you so much for awarding me with the scholarship. <laughs> Thank you. 
Welcome to Rachel Heater. Thanks for joining us, Rachel, and thanks for uh, contributing to our scholarship gala. Pleasure. Now, um, where did you go to school in Berks County? I grew up in the Governor Mifflin School District and went to uh, choir and band in that district, but I was homeschooled. Okay. Yeah. But you were also, um, I believe, part of the children's chorus, is that right? Yes, yeah, I started singing with the uh, the training chorus and um, went up through choristers, took a bit of a break through chorale and then rejoined and spent a couple of years in, in master singers in high school. That's awesome. Great experience. I, I, I've, I've heard such great things about that program in terms of what it does to set you up musically. Yeah, and, um, and you were studying, you actually have just graduated. Um, you're a scholarship uh, recipient from last year. Yes. Yeah, so I, I went to Kutztown. I started in Kutztown in 2008, um, took a bit of a break again, and uh, and then finished my degree in graduated in 2020. Oh, well on you for coming back. <laughs> Not everyone keeps that momentum and, and figures out a way back into it. I well, I was... I know you pretty well because I was lucky to get to work with you um, in your junior year, I guess it would have been at Kutztown. Um, so thanks for your part singing in the choir and, and beautiful singing solos as well. Yeah, so you are, um, what's next for you? Well, um, I, I have looked into some grad school programs. I'm not ruling that out just yet. Mm -hmm. um, but right now um, I'm living in Northern Ireland. I'm here for a couple of years at least and looking for opportunities to sing, um, community opera companies, um, local community choirs, that kind of thing. Oh, what fun. Uh, the Red and Choral Society actually just had a summer sing workshop on Irish choral music, which uh, oh, we learned wonderful. is a bit of an unusual thing in terms of traditional music. So yeah, well, that's, that's really exciting. Best yeah. of luck with your endeavors there. Thank you. So uh, you're sharing a clip with us that's from a recital. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, about that song and, and, and maybe mention something about the recital? Sure, yeah. A friend of mine, uh, the pianist you'll see in the video, um, and myself put together a recital of all German leader. Um, and this was our finale, um, Widmung by Robert Schumann. Um, it was my favorite piece in the whole recital. Um, it was very special um, to Jean, my, my partner as well. and. Um, he dedicated this to a friend of his who had lost his father um, recently. So that was a bit of a special moment, um, but really a fun kind of passion project for us um, my last semester at school. Lovely. Can you give us a, a quick synopsis of the translation for those of us that aren't fluent in German? <laughs> uh, yeah, I can try. I should have prepared some, uh, had the translation handy. Um, but oh, it's, no it's a dedication to um, a loved one. Um, not necessarily a romantic love. Um, it can certainly be interpreted that way, but um, just uh, I think the first the first phrase is "You are my heart," um, and also my pain. Um, so that just that kind of uh, the difficulties and and wonderful um, contrast that you have in um, in a relationship with someone you love. Thank you, and we, we'll put the translations below in the description as well for specifics. So. Well, thank you so much for taking part in our scholarship gala. Yeah, of course. Looking forward.
To conclude, our alto section leader, Marcelo Leibowitz, will sing the aria De Per Questo Istante Solo from Mozart's opera Clemenza di Tito. For a little bit of context, the singer has been sentenced to death for leading a rebellion, but while being led away, sings of her love and past friendship for the person who did the sentencing. This is De Per Questo Istante Solo by Mozart. <laughs> Oh, 
If you would like to contribute to the Reading Choral Society Voice Scholarship Fund, please see the link in the description below and just put a memo on it saying that it is for the scholarships. Thank you so much for your support. <laughs>